weekend, I was with some friends. Um, one a Silicon Valley executive told me of his daughter who got, who found at USF a professor who was so inspiring that she changed her whole career, her whole major. She's now a computer science major and is so excited about it. The power of teachers, inspiring teachers to inspire students. And that works whether you're a privileged daughter of a Silicon Valley executive or a totally underprivileged student in South Central LA taught by Jaime Escalante. And this is where technology, now, quick cut to the history of entertainment. In 1900, a great way to die poor was to be an actor, a musician, or a ball player. By the way, a musician is still a good way to be poor. <laughs> yeah, you're the expert. Yes. But now, look at the Forbes list, and you see these rock star ball players, entertainers, with $100 million a year annual earnings, not from stock options or anything like that, just cash money. What caused that? technology, recording technology, distribution, broadcast technology that now enables an actor, musician, or ball player to play to an audience not limited by the reach of their voice in a hall, but to play to a worldwide audience. Now what does that mean for the audience? Uh, this morning I started my day in Galt, California, Central Valley, which reminds me in 1900 the United States was rural. What was the quality of the best actor or singer in Galt, California? Big voice. Not very good. Um, and that was the entertainment that everyone was, had to be satisfied with 110 years ago. Today, we listen to the best in the world. Yeah. The best in the world, whether it's Rihanna or Snoop Dogg or uh, whatever, uh, all brought to us by technology. Now, what happens to the quality, superbly better, and the quantity of consumption? 100 years ago, you might see mu music performed or play once a month, maybe once a year. Today, we're surrounded. TV is on an average of six hours a day. Uh, music in our cars, in our homes, in our ears, in our pockets. One field has not benefited from this revolution. One entertainment field, education. Teachers are still limited to play to an audience of 30. So think of the economics that happen when you're limited to an audience of 30. Now think of it from the student standpoint. Take a student at local Dove Valley Elementary fourth grade science, does that student get the best science teacher in all of Tucson? Or the best science teacher in Dove Valley Elementary? No. They get whoever they got. Odds are it's a teacher who took English or education and has no passion of, for science. Technology now allows us to change that. Two words, Khan Academy. Here's the world's most prolific educator. He's produced over 2,600 10-minute lectures. And he's the most viewed, about 3.5 million visitors a month. What that now means is that teachers are flipping the day. Why do a shitty lecture on science when you can have one of the world's best do the lecture on science? And why waste classroom time for that lousy lecture? They flip the day, assign Khan Academy at night. The students do that for homework. And then they come in and do the problem sets in class where the teacher can do what only a local teacher can do, which is one-on-one. -on -one. Coaching, discipline, encouragement. What this creates is not only much more time spent one-on-one -on -one in the classroom, helping every student where they are, it also creates rock star teachers. Now, Saul Khan does it as a nonprofit, but people are throwing millions at him to support his work. But I can see a day when there's non- and for-profit teachers who become famous just like entertainers because they are the best in the world teaching what they teach. And they're viewed by people all over the worst schools in India. 20% of the teachers in India do not show up to their public school jobs on any given day. No longer do you have to be dependent on that. You can get the best in the world.